Welcome to this fair of grace. I'm Pastor Shogun Baje. Thank you for tuning in and God bless you. It's a beautiful day and it's a beautiful week. We've been considering the subject of the grace of God. And today we're looking at how to not quench the grace of God, how to not discourage the grace of God, how to not um, make in vain the grace of God. Because see, the grace of God can be quenched. It can be discouraged. It can be made to be vain, so to speak. And God doesn't want that. God has invested his grace in us so that we can make profit with his grace. God wants you to make profit with his grace on your life. Glory to God. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, the Bible tells us, it says, um, but by the grace of God, I am who I am. Paul speaking here, and his grace toward me was not in vain. All right, why? But I labored more abundantly. So you see, to carry God's grace and be lazy with it, all right, is to discourage the grace of God. You know, laziness is actually anti-grace. Sometimes you see some very lazy people, they tell you, well, they lean on God's grace, they are doing nothing. <laughs> Evidently, they are not leaning on grace, all right? They are leaning on their laziness and they won't produce anything. Praise God. So you see, laziness and grace don't go together. Idleness and grace don't go together. All right? Being a tail bearer, moving from one house to another, discussing different people, talking politics, all right, without doing what is expected of you, without solving problems, you know, and, you know, the reason you were employed or, you know, being paid, that's not the grace of God. That discourages the grace of God. So inaction is anti-grace, all right? It's very much against the grace of God. If you have received God's grace and you don't want to quench it, you don't want it to lie fallow, then you have to begin to labor with that grace. Glory to God. Again, you know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1, the Bible tells us, it says, We then, as walkers, not idlers, walkers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. You see that? So walkers are actually those who have not received God's grace in vain. All right? Grace is there for them to walk with. All right? I, idlers have received God's grace in vain. So God is going to take that grace from them and give it to someone who is walking with God's grace. You remember the parable of the talents? You know, the servant that had one and was angry and offended in his master, angry with his master, offended in him, and went to, you know, dig the ground and hide it there. And the master came and took it from him and gave it to the one who had five and labored and got five extra. So you see, grace can be taken from people and given to those who are working with the grace of God. So you, you don't discourage God's grace, you work with it. And finally, considering Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21, this was Paul here speaking. It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the Lord and Christ is dead in vain, frustrating God's grace simply means acting contrary to the knowledge of the grace of God, acting contrary to what the grace of God has come to do. It's God's soft loan, an investment to empower us to solve problems, meet needs, serve our generation, and do great things for God. So don't frustrate the grace of God by acting contrary. It's either you are, you are not acting at all or you are doing something contrary to the grace of God. Somebody who has received grace, you know, to walk and live holy, you shouldn't act contrary. Your action must be consistent with the grace of God that you have received. I believe you've been blessed today. Until I come your way again tomorrow, keep living and basking in the sphere of grace. I love you and God bless you.